The criteria for induction into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame is for someone who has made a significant and lasting contribution to one or more ethnic groups or the entire ethnic community as a whole. Architect Burr Shakarian fits this definition to a T. Since 2010, sold out crowds of 500 or more have gathered annually to honor new inductees into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame and be inspired by their achievements and words. Unfortunately, this came to an abrupt stop in 2020 when COVID-19 prevented groups from gathering. The 2020 class had already been selected from a worthy list of over 100 nominees, but we could not gather together to honor them. Until we can gather together again, we are inducting the 2020 class virtually. It's not the same, and they deserve the applause of 500 people in the room, but at least they will be recognized. As you will hear in the following induction speeches, Burj Shakarian is a member of the Armenian community and a world-class architect. His work in the Armenian Cultural Garden, especially on the stunning Armenian alphabet sculpture, is certainly significant and lasting. The Cleveland Armenian community, clergy, dignitaries, and friends gathered at the new Armenian Cultural Garden at 741 MLK Boulevard in Cleveland on Sunday, September 19, 2010. The alphabet monument symbolizes the centrality of the Armenian language in creating the Armenian state. In order to make the Bible accessible to Armenians, St. Mezrab Mashtos invented the alphabet around 404 CE. The alphabet sculpture is composed of staggered granite blocks representing both the turbulent history of the Armenian people and the ruggedly beautiful landscape of Armenia and the Caucasus region. The reverse side of the monument is inscribed with Pride of a Nation, listing the anglicized names of 33 men and women noted for their historical and cultural contributions to the Armenian nation as briefly stated next to each name. Significant and lasting, especially to the Armenian community. But Burge did not stop there. As architect of the Centennial Peace Plaza in the Cleveland Cultural Gardens, Burge helped create a gathering space for music, dance, entertainment, and more for generations to come. Anyone driving down MLK Boulevard can witness two of the significant and lasting creations of 2020 Cleveland International Hall of Fame inductee Burge Shakarian. Congratulations, Burge. I'm Wild Cooley, the president of the Cleveland Cultural Gardens Federation. I want to congratulate Mr. Burr Shakarian for being inducted to the International Hall of Fame in Cleveland. I've known Burr for many, many years, and I always find him a very professional person, very diligent in his work, always seek uh, perfection in, in his uh, designs and uh, construction. And he was very instrumental in building up the Armenian Cultural Garden, and in the last three, four years, I worked very closely with him to uh, build up the Centennial Peace Plaza. He made the designs and he did the best job possible for an architect to get this uh, beautiful plaza here uh, up to par with the best, uh, cent best uh, features or monuments in Cleveland. So we're very excited uh, that uh, Burj was able to do this and uh, we wish him and his family best wishes for good health for many years to come. Thank you. Hello, my name is Paul Burek. I'm the past recipient of this prestigious award. It is my privilege and honor to introduce to you my friend and colleague, Birch Akarian. Birch is the architect of this new feature in a Cleveland cultural garden. The Centennial Peace Plaza. How appropriate that Mr. Shakarian would be inducted into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame at one of his own designs. To us architects, the utilization of our creation is the most sincere form of reward. Birch Shakarian cherishes his Armenian heritage, although he was born and grew up in Bucharest, Romania. As with many refugee families, the path to safety and success is long and winding. As a young boy in Bucharest, Birch enjoyed chess, sketching buildings, and soccer. 
Bridge told me a story from his youth that qualified all these three quantities to his future. As a boy, he obtained two. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> As a boy, he obtained two tickets to an important soccer match, and was, and was all excited to see a Premier team play in an international soccer match. However, his mother made him give up the tickets to his sister so that she could go on a date. Despite a huge disappointment, he obliged and gave up his cherished pair of tickets. Not giving up on, his, on seeing the game, Birch managed to sneak into the game. Who would stop? Who would stop an eight-year-old boy who appeared to be lost? At the game, he met his sister and her date, who happened to be a young architect. With his sharp reasoning developing chess and the love of sketching buildings, and inspired by his new acquaintance, Birch Destiny was cast. He needed to be an architect. Bridge Akarian arrived in America on July 4th, 1961, and there were fireworks everywhere. Yes, it was 60 years ago this month. He enrolled at Case Western Reserve University to study architecture. Commuting to classes, he met his future wife on a rapid transit of all places. He and Carol, an American of Hungarian heritage, wed in 1971. That makes a 50 year anniversary this year. Congratulations on that, Birch and Carol. They brought up four children, all now hold PhDs. Of course, they are very proud of them. Though, Birch did mention that none of them became an architect. After a private practice of architecture for three years, Mr. Shakarian was invited to be a Cuyahoga County architect. What an achievement! After a 32 year career with the county, Birch retired, although he still teaches and does occasional work mainly for the new gardens here in this beautiful park. He participated in the restoration of the Lakeside, <coughs> excuse me, Lakeside Courthouse, a landmark building as well as refurbishing of the Soldiers and Sailors Monument at the Public Square. What an honor. Mr. Shakarian oversaw numerous building upgrades and new construction for the county. As I already noted, Mr. Shakarian is the architect for this plaza. He also designed the Armenian Cultural Garden and is currently helping the Turkish community with their new garden. For those of you who are aware of the recent history and attention in that region, it is absolutely admirable that Mr. Shakarian would rise above it all for the sake of friendship and mutual understanding, the motto of these spectacular cultural gardens. And that is Birch. Birch, it is my pleasure to present to you the Cleveland International Hall of Fame Trophy. And it is a tradition to pen the new inductee with a pen. Welcome to the group. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Paul Burek, and my sincere gratitude to the entire Hall of Fame committee for selecting me to join such a prestigious company. I am both honored and humbled during these trying times. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the year of 2020. 
Cleveland has been a journey of discovery for me for almost 60 years. This town has become the place that I call home and have created a family life with a lovely local Hungarian girl. We met on the old CTS rapid transit while commuting to college. And since that time, we have had four children and 50 years together. As a young man wandering the streets of downtown Cleveland, I came to love this city passionately. Little that I know that one day I would be responsible for restoring and repairing the imposing Soldiers and Sailors Monument. Or that I would have a hand in saving the state and Ohio theaters. I recall walking in the state theater with the roof collapsing and seeing the East of Java movie poster with Robert Mitchum. Today, Playhouse Square is certainly a success story. Cleveland has changed for the better and occasionally in some ways not for the better. However, today we still admire the vision of Mayor Tom L. Johnson and his legacy which was to make Cleveland a progressive city that evolved from a village to a great American metropolis. During those first decades after the turn of the century, Cleveland suddenly became the biggest city between New York and Chicago. The progressive vision attracted much talent to Cleveland. One such individual was Robert Moses. At the time, Moses was not welcome to Cleveland. He went, and he went on to become the controversial Parks Commissioner in the state of New York, changing New York City from a medieval town to a modern metropolis. How might have Cleveland changed if he had remained here? As an architect, I marvel at the civic buildings clad in stone and defining the mall for the meaning and value. This new structure, clad in glass and metal, never quite had the gravitas. Glass and metal buildings get there in time, while stone buildings age gracefully with a patina filled with memories like old wine. I too was blessed to have a hand in Mayor Tunnel Johnson's vision by restoring the crown jewel of the group plan, the Cuyahoga County Courthouse. It has been a lifetime endeavor and well worth the effort. However, Cleveland has lots of well-kept secrets. Those secrets are the Cleveland Cultural Gardens and now they are becoming less and less a secret. It was the dedication of the Shakespearean Garden in 1916 and the inspiration of Leo Weidenthal that provided for these gardens of peace to encourage the local population for a better world. Thus, the Cleveland Cultural Gardens were founded over 100 years ago. Set in the beautiful Rockefeller Park between Lake Erie and University Circle, the gardens include monuments and memorials that represent more than 30 nationalities. It is a cosmopolitan landmark, unlike any in the world, that promotes peace and understanding among different cultures. On a personal note in this context that our son Pietro insisted on the creation of the Armenian Cultural Garden in 2008. Pietro recently earned a PhD from Ohio State University. The Cleveland Connection exists here as well. His thesis centers on Anastas Mikoyan, the Soviet statesman who came to Cleveland in 1959 to visit Cyrus Eaton. On 21st of August 2020, the Cleveland Cultural Gardens Federation celebrated the virtual dedication of the Centennial Peace Plaza 
with a score from Anthony Dvorak. Congratulations to all the gardens. The plaza shall serve as a setting for memory, meaning, reflection and community with the adage, peace to mutual understanding. It is a fine opportunity to increase awareness of our cultural heritage as Americans and to create a wonderful teaching moment for the community at large. The effort is dedicated to the people of the world who suffered during 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. Once again, many thanks for this special hour. Thank you.